now we will move to reaction kinetics all right and now obviously reaction kinetics deals with firstly it is very important for you to know the feasibility of a reaction it is very important for you to know whether the reaction will be spontaneous or not and we know that if the gibbs free energy is less than zero then your reaction would be uh, spontaneous right that that's the thermodynamics part right and then we also saw reversible and irreversible reactions uh, reversible reactions and we'll be seeing those in equilibria right and then we come to the speed of reaction so whether a reaction is reversible or irreversible so that is what relates to a reaction whether the reaction is spontaneous or not that's one information about the reaction the third thing is basically the speed of reaction and that's obviously very important for us to know right like if you can be expecting ke bhai koi cheez foran spontaneously ho jayegi ya immediate reaction hoga fast reaction hoga then you know you really need to know whether it's going to be slow or whether it's going to be fast obviously so this speed of reaction or the rate of reaction is what we deal with in reaction kinetics right and not only do we deal with the rate or the speed of the reaction we also kind of figure out the mechanism of reactions right like if it's a slow step fast step so all those mechanisms are also kind of figured out through what reaction kinetics so not only is the rate figured out but also the mechanism of reactions is kind of revealed through uh reaction kinetics right now rate rate can be expressed in terms of the change in concentration per unit time so you know that rate will be directly proportional or the rate of reaction is equal to the change in concentration of the reactant or the change in concentration of the product per unit time right and uh, for example if you're taking reactant right so initially your reactant concentration you can express it in terms of reactant concentration and you can express it in terms of you can express it in terms of product concentration theek hai to aap express kar sakte ho in terms of product concentration and in terms of reactant concentration obviously when you are taking a reactant a concentration time graph so initially the reactant concentration will be high and then obviously it will keep on decreasing because it's making the product and then it become a, a flat will like uh, flatten off right whereas the product obviously initially product concentration is going to be zero and then it's going to increase and then it will be an upward sloping graph right so you can use reactant concentration or तो रिएक्टेंट कंसंट्रेशन अगर जब यूज करना होता है फॉर रेट सो कैन आई से रेट विल बेसिकली बी द डिक्रीज इन कंसंट्रेशन ऑफ रिएक्टेंट डिक्रीज इन कंसंट्रेशन ऑफ रिएक्टेंट पर यूनिट टाइम एंड इफ यू आर यूजिंग द प्रोडक्ट टाइम ग्राफ टाइम ग्राफ देन रेट विल बेसिकली बी द इंक्रीज इन कंसंट्रेशन ऑफ प्रोडक्ट पर यूनिट टाइम राइट नाउ इफ यू वर टू फिगर आउट द रेट यू कैन टेक एनी टू पॉइंट्स ऑन दिस ग्राफ एंड यू कैन से ओके मे बी आई कैन टेक दिस व्हिच इज T1 and at that point my reaction concentration is r1 and i can take t2 at this point my concentration is r2 right so basically you can say okay my rate will basically be uh, the change in concentration which is the final minus the initial so do you see the final is r2 minus r1 final is less right compared to uh, okay divided by the time the change in time or delta t which will be the final time which is t2 minus t1 so 2 obviously is the final and 1 is the initial for both the uh, for both concentration and time now likewise we will be calculating rate uh, of a uh, change in product concentration which will be an increase so you can again take two points let's take t1 and let's take t2 so here t1 pay your product concentration is p1 and at t2 your product concentration is p2 so you will basically say okay it is equals to p2 minus p1 upon delta t which is p2 minus 1 right so if you look at this if you look at um, the rate that you are calculating for reactant change in reactant 
concentration upon time this basically will give you a negative value why because aapka jo uh, r2 hai that is always going to be a lower value so r2 will be less than r1 obviously right because initial concentration will always be more for the reactant so whenever you are calculating this this what you're calculating here is called the average rate what do we call this the average rate so whenever you're calculating the average rate for change in reactant concentration you always put a negative sign because rate can never be a negative so when you will be calculating for the change in concentration of a reactant to aapko negative value milegi because r2 will always be less than r1 so what you're going to get is going to be a negative value and rate cannot be negative so whenever you are doing uh, the reactant concentration and rate will be equals to rate will be equals to minus delta r upon delta t why do you put a minus sign here so as to remove the negative sign which will come out when you will be solving for this because r2 will be less than r1 that that and then product because negative gradient i right and for uh, this obviously will be a positive sign so it doesn't have to this for this one you do not have to put a negative sign because this will give you a positive value so this will be the change in product concentration upon delta t right so for product when you're dealing with product concentration and calculating the average rate you do not have to incorporate a negative sign but when you are using the reactant concentration as to determine the rate you have to put a negative sign in your equation uh, because obviously rate cannot be negative okay now we will see this what you're calculating here is the average rate this right here is the average rate now if you want to find out the rate at a specific time right like for example i want rate at t or i want the rate at uh, t uh, 600 seconds or i want the rate at t 400 seconds right if i want a, the rate at a specific time right so if i want it at any specific time even if it is t0 or any specific uh, time right so you will be asked if you have asked to find the rate at any specific time that is called what it is not called the average rate but it is called the instantaneous rate this is at that specific instant right so it's called the instantaneous rate so instantaneous rate jo hota hai that is at a specific time and if you were to find the instantaneous rate for anything then you know what to do you have to what draw a tangent and find the gradient the method will be the same the method will be the same which will be change in concentration upon change in time but what you will have to do is because obviously if for example i want to find the rate at let's suppose kya okay so if i want to find the rate at let's suppose uh, 400 seconds okay time hai yahan pe in seconds and this right here is the concentration so your time right here is in seconds and you have the concentration so if i want to find out the rate at t 400 so at that specific time it's very it's going to be very difficult for me to figure out the change in concentration because it will be so minute right so what you do is basically to find the rate you will still need to do what delta a change in minus delta r upon delta t you will have to do that but for that what you will do is make a tangent you will make a tangent and basically what you kind of do is go like two values before and two values ahead of it like take a gap of like at least two readings extend the tangent to up to like two values ahead of it like for example if it's 400 you go 600 and 800 and over here you go to 200 and um uh, 100 or whatever right so basically you extend to two values before and uh, two values ahead and two values behind the actual time t that you require that you need to find the instantaneous rate for so you extend this and you draw a tangent and then you can find the gradient of the tangent right you find the gradient of the tangent and that will give you the rate and you know rate is what change in concentration upon time hence the Um, SI units for rate would be since it's change in concentration. Concentration is in moles per dm cube, and it's upon time, so it's going to be per second, right? Per second, right? So this right here is uh, this, right? Now let's see the fact that affect rate. We know that there are. 
four factors affecting weight. There is a change in con this concentration, this temperature, there's pressure, and there is catalyst. So factors which affect rate. You have concentration. You have temperature. You have um, pressure. And you have catalyst. Now, obviously, if you will increase the concentration, the rate will increase. If you increase the concentration of the reactants, the rate will increase, right? Because obviously, there will be more chance of successful collisions, and obviously, the rate will increase, right? We know that. Now, so concentration, can I say, is directly, let's see concentration. So let's see that, that factor first, and we know that if you increase the concentration, the rate is directly proportional to the concentration of the reactants. Right now, let me just take a general equation where you have A A plus B B giving C C plus D and D. So if I were to write down the rate equation, which is also known, by the way, now we can write this right here is the rate equation, right? So the rate equation is also known as the rate law. You can also call it what the rate law and through this you also find what you can find the rate constant so you know that rate is directly proportional to a raised to the power x times b raised to the power y because we're dealing with the uh, reactants it is not necessary it is not necessary that x and y will be equal to a and b it can be equal to a and b but it is not necessary they may be equal to a and b and they may not be equal to a and b so that's why i've not put a and b right uh, uh, here the the small a and small b right so these uh, 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 the rate may may be raised to the stoichiometric coefficient or it may not be right and once i explain the order of reaction which you guys already probably know who well, i'm going to uh, you're going to know what these X and Y's can be. So rate is basically equals to when you remove the proportionality sign, you get this K, which right here is the rate constant. So it is the rate constant times A raised to the power X and B raised to the power Y, which may or may not be equal to what the stoichiometric coefficient in the overall equation. overall equation. Now, you know that... Um, Okay, so what is the rate law? The rate law or the rate equation is basically the molar concentration of the reactants raised to a value or a power which may or may not be equal to the stoichiometric coefficient in the balanced chemical equation, right? So that's what our rate equation or our rate law is. Now, you cannot calculate this X and Y, these powers that you have, X and Y, they cannot be calculated theoretically, right? They cannot be calculated theoretically they need to be calculated how experimentally so you cannot find these out theoretically you need to find them how experimentally and so experimentally now let's see the experiment that was conducted let's take an example so you have 2NO plus O2 giving 2NO2 Right, and we conducted multiple experiments as to figure out what this X and Y is. So you will only be able to find X and Y experimentally, not theoretically. Okay, so let's do the four experiments. So you had experiment one, two, three, and four, and where you change the moles or the, co the concentration basically of the reactants. Let's say initially both the concentrations were 0.3. Okay, and when both of them were 0.3, your rate was 0.096. Okay, when this was, then you increase this, double this, but this, however, stayed the same 0.3. Then you um, let this be 0.3 and double this one. Then you let both those, both these be what 0.6. And at the, when you were conducting these experiments, obviously calculated the value of rate with the change in concentration, right? Where one of them was changing, the other one was re remained uh, the same. Right, so initially both were 0.3, then one was 0.6, the other was 0.3, then one was 0.3, the other was 0.3. So basically you were changing one and letting one be the same. So now when this happens, you see the effect of rate or the change in 
concentration, how that affects the rate. So let's see experiment one and two. When you do experiment one and two, you're only changing, in experiment one, two, you're only changing the concentration of NO. Do you see that? So this is increasing by two. Do you see this? But when you see the effect on rate, the effect on rate is increasing by four times, right? Now let's see experiment, um, experiment one and three. In one and three, you are changing just oxygen right you can take one and three you can take two and four either or and you see that either this or this in both of these you say you see that the concentration is changing by two no you can't yeah you uh concentration is changing by two and if you see the rate i'm going to do it with a different color if you see the rate the rate is also changing by two right so you can say you can say that rate you know that rate is directly proportional to no and o2 right this was x this was y so now i know when no is changing by two times like it's changing the rate dub like is increasing by four when you increase the constant you double the concentration of no the rate increases by four times so can i say x will be two because aapke paas jab ye double ho raha hai, this is increasing by four whereas when oxygen is increasing by two rate is also increasing by two so this will be raised to the power one right whereas no is related or affects the rate by square of its concentration whereas oxygen only y the value of y is one right and you can remove the proportionality sign and it'll be k which will be your rate constant right these powers uh, coincidentally match with their stoichiometric coefficient here but it is not necessary that they do right you know that only the slow step uska jo power hota hai wo us, i'm just going to get to that later but anyway it is not necessary that in the overall equation you see the rate uh, the stoichiometric coefficient and you equate it to the uh, power of the concentration of those reactants no for example let's take another example where it does not happen for example you have ch cl3 plus cl2 will give you ccl4 plus hcl in this when you see if you see this equation you will expect okay well rate is directly proportional to ch cl3 raised to the power x and cl2 raised to the power y and if you're assuming it is equal to one and one so you'd be expecting ye bhi one hai ye bhi one hai but when experimentally this was done they saw that it was raised ch cl3 was raised to the power one where cl2 was raised to the power half Right, so obviously it is not equal to the stoichiometric coefficients, but you can only figure this out through experiment, right? And it is not necessary that the power that is raised has to be an integer or a whole number. It can also be a it can also be a decimal value, right? Let's take another example in example three, where you will see that it is not equal to the stoichiometric coefficient. Let's take ethyl ethanoate. We add that in water. And you will get what ethanol and ethanoic acid, right? So you get and you assume the power it and one to conduct this that it is to the power to ethyl ethanoate, yes, but raised z effect to water. Right, so equal to this And now I'm just going to do what the order of reaction is, which you. I told you that guy reaction kinetics. We are dealing with the reaction, but we will also be dealing with mechanisms of reactions. Reactions do not happen in one go. They may be happening in multiple steps. Right, so some steps may be slow, some steps may be fast. So, obviously, if I have a slow step, let me say. Uh, a plus B giving C uh, was my slow step and then C plus D giving um, A whatever I mean a B plus D I mean whatever right this was the fast step right so the slow step let's say was taking what uh, 20 seconds or 20 minutes 20 minutes and this was a fast step this is taking let's suppose one minute 
so my overall time that it took to make my final products is how many minutes it'll be 21 minutes right because it's going to be 20 plus one so obviously do you see that majority of my time depends on what the slow step so my rate technically depends on what the slow step the rate determining step will always be the slow step okay now let's see so if you have multiple steps in a reaction uh, uh, for example let's take an example of uh, multiple steps right so i'm going to give you the overall reaction which is no2 plus co giving no plus co2 this reaction right here happens in multiple steps let's take the first step the first step is 2 no2 giving no3 plus no this right here is your slow step which you know is the rate determining step and the second step the second step is no3 plus co giving no2 plus co2 this right here is my fast step right so you know that the rate determining step will be uh, the slow step right so now there's something called the order of reaction and what is the order of reaction it is basically the power to which the reactant concentration is raised to uh, uh, the reactant concentration is raised in the rate determining step so the reactants that you have in the rate determining step will basically be the only ones affecting your rate and what do i mean by that if i look at this this is my overall reaction do you see that in overall reaction i have no2 as well as carbon monoxide as my reactants but my rate is not affected by both because my slow step will determine the rate and in the slow step i just have no2 so my rate it will be directly proportional to NO2 and now I can say yes it is raised to a stoichiometric coefficient. You cannot raise it to the number of moles depending on the overall equation no but if you can if you have the slow step then yes you can determine it determine the order by looking at the molar coefficient right so this right here this two right here is the order of reaction and it is what it is basically the power to which the reactant concentration is raised in the rate determining or the slow step right so if i were to write for this entire overall equation if i were to write the rate equation i would say rate is equals to k no2 raised to the power 2 do you see yaha pe rate equation mein 2 hai but over here is ke sirf 8 moles hai because these moles are not what will govern the order what will what will tell us the order the rate determining step and since there's no co in the rate determining step i can say co is raised to the power zero so co is uh, it's zero order with respect to co and it's second order with respect to no2 generally uh, now this is individual order right if i were to find the overall order of this reaction if i want to find overall order that will be two plus zero so basically you add both the orders that will give you the overall order usually you do not see reactions above or be, well, you do not see reactions beyond third order the maximum the reactions can go up to is third order we do not see fourth order reaction or fifth order reaction very hard to uh, make those reactions happen they don't happen as such right now let's see let's see another example where you have multiple steps and let's say 2NO2 plus F2 giving 2FNO2. Let's see the two steps. The two steps are um, NO2 plus F2 giving FNO2 plus F. This is your slow step. And the second step is NO2 plus F giving FNO2. This is your fast step. Obviously, my rate will depend on the slow step. So my reaction. So my, what do you call it? My rate equation basically depends. On two raised to the power one, F two raised to the power one. Even though do you use
Can you guys hear me? I don't know what happened. Okay. So now your rate will be equal to uh, will be equals to k, which is your rate constant. No two raised to the power one and F two raised to the power one, right? And this will be your. Uh, uh, now, if you were to find the overall order, the overall order would be one plus one, which will be two, right? So you usually do not see uh, reactions beyond the third order. Both unlikely, hota hai, but yeah. So this is how you figure out the order, individual and overall order of reaction, right? And we're gonna pick up uh, from here in the next class. And uh, are there any questions? Anything that you guys did not understand? Anything that you want me to explain? <laughs>